Welcome to Christmas in July on Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark Review Podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm a, I'm a what? I'm a former <laughs> Hallmark hater. Today we're discussing The Nine Kittens of Christmas, which originally aired as part of the Countdown to Christmas lineup in 2021. Hang out with us when the podcast is over. You can follow us on Instagram. We are Girls Gone Hallmark. We are also Megan and Wendy. Uh, come on over and talk. Every time, okay, let me tell you this. Every time I say, come on over and talk, all I hear is Christina Aguilera. Come on you know, over. She had, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I, I need chat GPT to come up with 10 different lines, Ooh. alternates who come on over. Anyway, come on over to our Girls Gone Hallmark Facebook group. There's been a lot of conversation in there lately. And if you are looking for like-minded people who are smart, who know who know a lot of like stuff about the industry don't you think we have a lot of people there who know just like insider information yes i love it so come join and get to know everybody yes ma'am and hey if you want to talk outside of the facebook group because that's not your thing we are all ears you can shoot us an email we have a brand new email Girls gone hallmark at gmail.com. That's right. Let's jump right in to a synopsis. Okay. Zachary and Mary Lee are thrown back together at Christmas when they're tasked with finding homes for a litter of adorable kittens. The Nine Kittens of Christmas was directed by David Winning, who has 81 directing credits. His other credits for Hallmark include Falling for Vermont, Yumi and the Christmas Trees, Field Day, and three, Time to Come Home for Christmas Movies. This movie was based on a book of the same name written by author Sheila Roberts. Aaron Dobson wrote the teleplay for Nine Kittens of Christmas. Aaron's other writing credits among her 17 total include Love for Real, One Winter Wedding, Curious Caterer Dying for Chocolate, and 21 episodes of The Good Witch. Brandon Routh, Kimberly Sested, Gregory Harrison, Stephanie Bennett, Carrie Feehan, and even Ambrose the Cat all reprise their roles from the Nine Lives of Christmas. Question, do you think it's the same cat? Uh, it is the same cat. Hey. I, that's why I included that. Same or cat. Or the intel I got says that it is the same Ambrose the Cat. Okay, so there's like seven years between these two movies. Is that right? I mean, cats live a long time. I guess they do, but that's amazing. We've had cats live to 20 multiple times. I know. Not we. My oh. mother has. <gasps> what, have you made any progress on adapting a shelter cat after our last well, discussion? thank you for asking. Uh, this past weekend, my husband and I were cruising through TJ Maxx, as old married couples do, <laughs> and we came like a, a, by the pet aisle, and I brought it up about <laughs> getting a cat, and the answer was, you're going to bleep this out. Oh, man. He's like, they're stinky. Like, he doesn't oh. want a litter box in the house, basically. Yep, that's the worst part. And he said they get cat hair everywhere. So not like, oh, we have dog hair everywhere. So I don't know what the difference it would make. But the answer was no. Well, my dog goes to the trainer every week. And my trainer is located directly across the street from an animal shelter. Mm -hmm. And I have been considering, I'm like, should I volunteer there? Oh, like they, I see the volunteers out, like walking the dogs all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, there's a TikTok influencer I follow who volunteers at her animal shelter. And she's like, they rely on volunteers to walk these dogs. And if they don't have enough volunteers, like sometimes the dogs just don't get walked. And it broke my heart to think about these dogs not getting let out. And then I was like, do the cats need socialization too? Anyway, I'm going to look into it. I love that for you. I was going to do the same. Because the local Mission Viejo animal shelter is here nearby. And um, I looked at their website recently about volunteer opportunities. And you have to start at a very like low level, like cleaning the like mm. pens and whatever. But like I wondered, I wondered if like dog walking and dog snuggles was like a, you know, an always need so I, we'll I assume so. there has to be. There has to be. Uh, also, directly next to the shelter is a German Shepherd rescue. Mm. And they 
they also often have volunteers walking those dogs. I'm like, there is a need. So, you know, I drop off. I'm like, I could spend an hour walking dogs. Listen, the SHIT my husband would give me about walking a shelter dog when I have two dogs of my own that Uh, (laughs) that I'm not great about walking. He walks them primarily, so... Well, I have the moral high ground on that one in my home because I walk my dog a minimum of twice a day. So this would not be like I don't walk my own dog. So, yes, I feel pretty good about that. Okay, moving on. Nathan Witt plays Miles. Nathan most recently appeared in the Gilded Newport Mysteries Murder at the Breakers. He has 70 total acting credits, which include Romance to the Rescue, A Christmas Treasure, and My Best Friend's Bouquet for Hallmark. Paul Campbell makes a cameo as Mason. Paul will add two movies to his 53 acting credits this year with Three Wise Men and a Boy, as well as The Cases of Mystery Lane. Death is listening. When I tell you, I am so excited for that sequel. I'm so excited for it. The Mystery Lane sequel, more than the Wiser Men sequel. I will say that IMDb currently credits that movie as Three Wise Men and a Boy. I did hear Tyler Hines refer to it as Three Wiser Men and a Boy. So we will wait for an official announcement. Oh, okay. Finally, it was reported that all of the kittens on set were adopted by cast and crew. So none of the nine kittens of Christmas are currently living out their lives in our local shelters. Let's go with first impressions. You already ruined mine, so you can go with yours. Oh, no. Was it Paul Campbell? It was Paul Campbell. I'm sorry. There were so many good places to put the Paul Campbell news. (laughs) What's your first impression? Paul Campbell, what are you doing here? (laughs) Mine was like, I love a surprise cameo. Hey, Paul Campbell. I'm sorry. And I got to tell you, when I did see him, I was like, <gasps> Me too. I was like, loved it. Me too. Uh, my first impression is the one-two punch of learning Zach and Marilee have broken up and Queenie died was almost too much to take. I agree with you. Let's talk about what we liked about this movie. Uh, well, go ahead. Go, I was going to say, if I can start off Please. with like the surprise... Mary Lee is not with Zach anymore. Zachary, sorry. But he's not, not, they're not together anymore. This was like, when does this happen? Like, I've, I don't think I've ever seen a Hallmark sequel where like your two couples, or you're not, where your two people are not together in the sequel. Yeah, I was genuinely shocked. And I, I liked that they, they hit me with that. Not that I liked mm-hmm. that they weren't together, but I liked that I could be surprised. Yeah, because it would be a very different movie if, mm. like, here they are, seven years later, not married. You know what I mean? Yes. So I was ex- I was kind of, I, I liked the twist and was also sad that her beloved cat had since passed. So Poor sad. Weenie, I know. What did the you new- like? Well, Sorry. Sorry. to piggyback on what you had to say, I think I like the direction of the storyline. Like you said, I don't want to be catching up with this couple seven years in the future. They're just still stagnant. I think as much as there's like silly Hallmark tropes, I think this is the very natural progression of a relationship. They get into a relationship. I mean, they end the first movie with like, I love you. And they're in this relationship and things move quickly. And then her life is moving forward and he's not sure he's ready. That's kind of pretty normal, right? To get to a point where one person's ready to take the next step and the other person isn't sure what they want Mm -hmm. and they break up. And then Mm -hmm. time passes and they realize, oh no, I've grown up a little bit. You were the one that I wanted. We end up back together. And there's no big explosive blow up. They don't come back together angry at each other. They're not making snide remarks at each other. Nobody stole the family business from another it's just (laughs) very natural i absolutely agree with that what i really liked was that in so many hallmark movies we get we get like the old flame is a guy where the guy comes back to town right Mm. and then he's left like he's left like his old girlfriend behind. And I like that we have like Marilee went out and did the damn thing with her career, right? Yes. She, she she was so invested in the first movie about wanting to be a vet. And I'm glad that like that happened. And she had to leave her place in their hometown to like, you know, make that happen. 
So, um, yeah, I just I just like that. Like it was like a role reversal a little bit. And then for me, I liked that her returning to the hometown like made sense. Like there was a purpose for her to be there because her family was there, right? Yes, yeah, she wasn't just relocating for him. She realized, oh, I actually would like to be around my sister and my niece. And the town does exactly. happen to need a new vet. Well, that, what a coincidence, but <laughs> yes. All those things I liked. What else did you like about this movie? Um, I, I love the kittens. I find them quite charming. It, <laughs> what, like, what can I say? A kitten is cute, and it makes the movie enjoyable. And the fact that there's so damn many of them all over the place. I loved it. Um, okay. We'll talk more about that. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I I loved Kimberly Sestet. She always delivers for me. Like, I'm yeah. not missing out on one of her movies. Um, I have to admit, I kind of feel like I have a, this is a new word I learned, a parasocial relationship with her. Yes. Or, like, I, I feel like we could be friends in real life, you know? Yes. Like, I feel like I know her. I have the same thing happening with um, Eric Mabius and Kristen Booth as well. A hundred percent. We just talked about this on an episode. Did of we? Field. Yes. Oh That's my! Where I used the term. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Where I Megan. said they are the those two are that whole team of the Science Seal delivered actors are really the only people that I feel like I understand why people create. Hallmark fan pages dedicated to Hallmark actors now because of the cast of Science Seal Delivered. Because I'm like, oh, yes, I know them. In fact, we'll discuss it. And this episode has already aired, but there is a Science Seal Delivered movie in which there's one scene that's so genuine that led me to Google, is Eric Mabius married? Because I was convinced that, like, he and Kristen Booth had to have had some sort of relationship. He He's is divorced. He is oh, divorced. divorced? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Well, Google AI did not deliver that information. It just delivered that he was married in 2006. Wikipedia shows that they have divorced. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. They met in high school. They have two children together. I know that. Um, oh, so you did Google the same thing. <laughs> I'm having a one-sided love affair with Eric Mabius slash Oliver O'Toole right now. I don't know what's wrong with me. I 100% understand. And back to this movie, I 100% agree with you about Kimberly Sestad. I do feel like she comes across as so genuine, but also so cool. So like, I cool. I feel like the way she talks in her movies is very cool and very... She talks like a person. She doesn't talk like an actor, if you know what I'm saying here. I do. She just delivers her lines very naturally. I'm like, oh, she's cool, which is also why I'm like, we could never be friends because I am not cool. This is why I get back. I'm like, I don't ever want to meet her because I'm like, I am not cool enough for her. Well, for my sake, I hope that we meet her on the cruise and then I can watch how you like fangirl, <laughs> fangirl and like have an anxiety meltdown about meeting her. So that would be great. See, I, on, I don't know what to do. I need someone. Oh, you know, a lot of the Facebook group members have been to a lot of these fan cons. I'm going to need someone to walk me through the appropriate interactions. I don't know what to do. Correspondent Mike has met Kimberly Sestad and has Correspondent Mike, with captain her. of the Sestads. That is right. So I'm sure he can give you some intel. I don't know what to do. I'm going to need to well, practice. You just, just got to practice being cool. You'll be fine. <laughs> just kidding. I don't, I don't know. Wow, this episode has really gone off the rails. You know, I would far prefer to like moderate a panel on the cruise than to meet them in a meet and greet, if I'm going to be honest. Just putting that out there in the universe. Not me. You can do that. Really? I'll take pictures. I don't want to do that. No, I would you rather don't? like. I, no, because I would much rather have like a casual get to know ya than like asking approved questions. Oh, you know sure. I, mean? I would like. Okay. Yes. Counterpoint the 
moderating a panel puts you on more even footing than the fan star interaction. Listen, I'm you're just imagining now. running into them at like Starbucks and being like, "Hey, how's your morning?" I mean, like, you know, I ran into a celebrity once or twice in an elevator, and it's going to happen on the cruise, and I'm just going to be like, "Oh, hey." We're going to see him at the gym in the mornings. The gym. We're going to see them at Starbucks in the mornings. After the gym. I already have a plan. Oh, shit. (laughs) I'm going to put it out here on this podcast right now, Christmas in July. We are going to get one Miss Kimberly Sestad on our podcast before the end of the year. Wow. Okay. I'm into it. Okay. I'm into it. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, people. All right. Is there anything else you liked about this movie? You know, what's funny, I'm just going to, I found this movie perfectly enjoyable, but I really struggled to come up with concrete things that I liked about it. But I, there's no, I don't have a big list of things I didn't like either. I just, I think it's, <clears throat> here's what I think. I think it was a nice bookend to the first movie. I, as you mentioned in our last review, when they la- when they announced this movie, we were like, we are not watching that. That sounds terrible. I didn't find it terrible. I found it a perfectly pleasant way to pass an hour and a half. I love Kimberly Sustad. I like the Paul Campbell moment. I just think it's fine. Let's talk what we wished for. I have a question first. Why do you think they needed like a follow-up to the first one? Well, I think the we're, first was like a couple thoughts. Were the fans dying to find out what happened to Marilee and Zachary? <laughs> yeah, I have a couple thoughts. I, One, we know these books okay. are these movies are based on books, right? So the IP mm-hmm. exists. The story's there. So do you think they're sitting around? They got to produce 40 movies. That's a lot of stories to tell. And they're like, look, we got this story. We could just ask Sheila Roberts. Yo, can we use the follow up? And make it great. The people love Kimberly Sustad. I don't know. I don't know if Nine Lives was such a fan favorite that people were clamoring for it. But I do think Mm -hmm. there's something about a sequel that people are like have a little bit of affection for that they are perhaps going to show up. Okay. What'd you wish for? Um, I'm sorry, but there was way too much cat stuff. I'm not a cat hater. But mm, it was like just too are. much. Too, I'm not. It was just too much cats. Like the whole story revolved around the cats. I get it. I just, it doesn't do it for me. It's animals in movies really don't do it for me. Like if this was the nine puppies of Christmas, it still wouldn't do it for me. Hmm. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. I feel like a a real jerk. I'm not. Un, I'm. I have a soft heart. Everybody. <laughs> like, I love animals, but I'm. I don't know. So, question: Do you think there's enough story to tell without the kittens? I don't think so. No. Yeah. No. Like we needed the kittens to drive up- this story forward. Exactly. I mean, she could come back to town for the holidays to see her family and whatever, and then run into him, Zachary, as Santa, and then without even having the kitten storyline, they could just be back in each other's lives because it's the holiday season. And, oh, but I guess that he needed a reason to stay because he was going to go skiing because he doesn't like the holidays. Yeah, there could be something else that kept him from going on a skiing trip. Like a, there was a huge snowstorm and there's a road closure and he can't get out of town or he finds out his, the, the fire chief is retiring and it's not a good time for him to leave. Like there are other ways that they could have manufactured him staying in town. And I do think that Miles gets a little bit of the short end of the stick in terms of the storytelling because we, we could have dug in deeper on that. If we're going to remove the kittens, which I'm not actually lobbying for, but if we're going down that path. (laughs) We could have dug in deeper on her relationship there and Mm -hmm. perhaps why the business relationship wasn't working. They do talk about it, but it is handled pretty tidily. Oh, Miles is going to buy me out and I'm going to move here in the end. Um, We just get that one moment where he arrives. They have that stupid misunderstanding 
where Zachary sees them through the window and they have to have that tropey moment where he gets mad and stomps off that she's, he doesn't stomp off, I suppose. He's just not mad, but disappointed is probably the right phrasing there. Mm -hmm. But I think, yes, we could have manufactured a different story. However, we could not have manufactured Zach and Merrily to have a different story because the whole thing is the cats. I get it. I understand. They'd be like, Queenie died. Hey. <laughs> Too bad. So sad. Listen, so speaking of Miles and that relationship, now from my point of view, like, it didn't seem like their relationship was on the rocks. Like, we see them at the clinic together. Like, it seemed fine. And then she tells the sister, like, oh, really? We miss each other, blah, 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 whatever. Like, we don't get to – just work is too much, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I – I, so I think I was kind of surprised that, like, their relationship, like, ended so abruptly. Mm. Like, there was, like, it, I mean, like, you're, you're, what came first, the relationship or the business? Was that ever, like, explained? Like, did they meet each other at the clinic? Was, was she his boss or vice versa? I don't, they own it together, so I don't think they met there, but. I don't I don't remember the origin of their relationship, but I agree it was a sharp left turn from like that cute moment where she like kisses him in the hallway to her yes, being like, Oh, yes. he's always disappointing me and always like putting work before our relationship. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, hello, you guys are the owners of this clinic and he's the only one back there. So if he's gotta be there for an emergency, he's gotta be there for an emergency. Like who, yes. who else is gonna cover it? I mean, be reasonable here. Yeah, they just wanted different things. Like, she is more cut out for being a small-town veterinarian where she can live that, like, small-town veterinarian life. And he's, like, big city, big clinic, making those big bucks. Yeah. Miami. What a choice. What a choice. What? What a choice. Okay, what else did you wish for? That's it. I have one. I, I just need you to explain it to me. Marilee's sister allows them to foster all these kittens but she was like nope our family's not ready for the responsibility of a cat like it was obvious that her daughter was going to get a kitten for christmas mm. i i don't know like would you ever bring like a litter of cats or dogs into your house but it would be like mm, we're not ready for an one single animal but sure we'll take care of a litter of very needy babies yeah, actually, I think me, probably not. Like, I'd be an immediate foster fail. However, I there are tons of people who do that. Like, my um, the people that live behind us, one of my daughter's really good friends, they're constantly fostering cats. Yeah, couldn't do it. Um, and they give them back because they need good fosters in order to find these animals' homes. Um, I actually follow a couple people on TikTok who are constantly fostering dogs, um, a lot of them do have dogs of their own, but some of them don't. And, you know, I think there's a place for that. They they need people to foster animals before they can get them placed in a home. So I I don't think it's that crazy to me that they were like, no, we can take this on temporarily, but we're not ready for the full-time commitment of a cat. I did feel like there were some, like, weird comments made throughout this movie. Like, someone was like, I just couldn't handle the idea of a cat home alone all day without me. That's the whole appeal of a cat. A cat DGAF about you. <laughs> like, <laughs> leave me a bowl of food and somewhere to poop and I'm good. I'm not saying you can neglect your cats, but it is perfectly fine to be a person who works a full-time job and has a cat at home. Cats are pretty low maintenance. Let's move on to did you see that? I have just one. Mm, go ahead. There is a scene in which um, Zach asks, Zachary asks Marilee to meet him there so um, he can show her the sign that he's built to go on the fire truck. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. As if the firehouse is closed when he's not working. Like, wouldn't there be still be a full staff of firefighters even though he is not on shift? Like, the place is dark. Nobody's there. And they're like, mm, we're closed. I mean, I'm, yeah, I don't think firehouses close, do they? <laughs> No, I don't. Think I mean, so. I know there are towns of like volunteer firefighters who like get the call and they like go answer. That's not what this is, though. This is like an actual fire station where there are people there. 
That's why they have a kitchen and they cook there and they sleep there. And anyway, I have two. Mm. Mary Lee's family, they're out shopping for a Christmas tree. And then they come home and they are decorating what clearly is a fake tree. Oh, didn't even notice. And a second one I have is Mary Lee makes a superhero crack to Zachary. Oh, yeah. And I thought it was funny because he has like this deep resume of like playing Superman or whatever his, his other yes. roles are. There else. were several Superman comments in the first movie. Yes. Nice. nice. All right. Would you rate this? Three stars. I gave it two and a half. Significantly lower than my than my previous rating on the first. Even one. the like joke about him making like the kitten mugshot posters didn't do it for you. That was hilarious. So he's I like, "These are my posters," and she's like, "That looks like a mugshot." I love it. There were things that were funny. I enjoyed some parts of it. I just send your emails to girlsgonehomework at gmail dot com. Well, I am afraid, having not yet watched our next review, A Very Merry Mix-Up, that the people are going to come for me because there are some things, judging a book by its cover, that make me very nervous. So come back for that if you like the controversy. In the meantime, (laughs) hop into the Facebook group. And if you love this podcast, we love your five-star ratings and reviews. You can leave them in the podcast app of your choice. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.